Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. As you can tell from the title of this video, we're talking about a slightly different kind of um, fold. Previously, we've talked about synclines and anticlines, which are basically just reverses of each other, um, or synforms and antiforms. And like I've said previously, a form is very different from a cline. They refer to two different things. Synform is not synonymous with syncline. However, we're talking about monoclines in this video, which are sort of like the little brother, uh, much less prominent, much less important, uh, just kind of living in the shadow of the anticline and the syncline. But a monocline actually is synonymous with a monoform, that's why I wrote that there. Um, but don't let that confuse you with the other two. Synform and antiform are still different from syncline and anticline. But for this video, we're concerned with, like I said, sort of this, you hear about them much less, and for a good reason. They're still technically folds, um, just based on their structure, but you'll see they're much more situational, much less common, um, and in generally, I think, less interesting than antiforms and synforms. There's just less to say about them. But um, just from the name monocline, you can tell that we are obviously talking about um, something to do with simians here, based on the fact that the Spanish word uh, for monkey is mono. <clears throat> uh, actually, no. A monocline simply refers to the fact that there's only one limb. Mono, uh, you know, you'll hear that used um, to sort of say single or um, one. Monocline, there's only one limb to this fold, while you'll recall with anticlines and synclines, there are two. So how can you have a fold with only one limb? That's a good question. Let's, let's just get a sample diagram here. We'll have our two-dimensional cross-sectional diagram. And now if we want to draw a monocline, it's going to look something like this. Maybe we've got a layer up here, a layer right there. And then maybe down here, this is where the monocline starts. And we're just going to have something that looks sort of like that, where it just starts tipping. These strata down here just start dipping all of a sudden. So what we're looking at is this piece right here. That's where our monocline is. I guess I just drew those two layers up here to put to put this in sort of context, I guess. But the monocline is what we're interested in, and that's right here where they they begin to start to dip. And as I said, this is unique in that we, you will not see, um, you'll just see it flat and then all of a sudden it starts to dip. You will not see them start to rise over here and form a, uh, a synformal shape. They'll simply just dip until eventually they level off or um, are broken into some other uh, rock unit. Um, but that's all a monocline is really. That's all there is to the definition. Uh, horizontal strata all of a sudden start dipping. That's a monocline. Only one limb. This Sometimes you won't even hear this called a limb, um, but I like to think of it in that way because mono as in uh, one limb. Uh, that's the type of fold it is. And you may be asking yourself, well, how do these form? Because this doesn't look like it could be formed under normal just pressure circumstances. Um, like the antiform and the synform would be. And this is where things get interesting because monoclines really are formed under situational circumstances. Um, so let me just give you an example. Let's say we have something down here, right? And underneath this piece, there's a fault. There's our hanging wall, there's our foot wall. And let's say we're going to have a monocline right here, right? So let's say we've just got something that goes something like this. We've got flat strata on top of it. And actually we should label one more piece of strata right here. It hasn't been faulted yet, but it will be. And then this down here, let's just say that's some, uh, some thick uh, rock down there. All one layer. Now, 
the monocline can form if we think of this well, let's just think of it as a normal fault, actually. The foot wall will be upthrown, pushing this piece up. And the, rever uh, the other, the hanging wall will be pushed downwards. So let's think of what would happen here. This piece is going to be pushed upwards. There's going to be a relative upward movement. So let's think what that would look like. Everything on this side, past this line, is going to be displaced upwards, right? It's not like a fault that I've drawn previously where you just kind of have everything just moves as one chunk. Um, since the fault actually cuts off here, um, you're going to see that though the fault still, this wall still moves up, so this strata, the strata that was previously at the top is now up here. Actually, it should be higher. The fault goes up here, right? Well, it doesn't just cut off all these other pieces. Actually, it should be more like... What am I doing? It should be something like that, right? So this, this layer goes, it's displaced upwards there. Well, the rest of the fault, now that it's moved up here, it doesn't just cut off the rest of them. It doesn't just get displaced over. So what we're actually going to see here is these layers above it get pushed upwards as well. And then that's where you get the formation of this monocline. This sudden change in dip. I know that's not a perfect picture, but you can see how this piece is forced upwards. It forces this strata that is a piece of the fault to go upwards, pushing the overlying strata up. But it doesn't, you know, these haven't moved at all. The hanging wall hasn't moved. It's relative to the foot wall it's moved downwards, but the hanging wall has remained in the same spot. So the, these strata on this side, they're remaining in the same position. But up here, you get some pressure from beneath, and they're not going to just break or get over or um, be uh, overlain by this piece. They're going to be forced upwards. And that's not going to look like a, a sudden just brittle snap. It's going to be this nice bend that creates this change in dip that we see. And that's basically how you'll see monoclines being formed. Um, there are other situations. Those are the most prominent, uh, most noticeable, easiest to talk about. Usually you see them as a result of having a fold and then a fault intrudes on that fold. Or you'll have, <laughs> excuse me, you'll have um, just normal strata and then a fault intrudes on those creating this um, half fold one-limbed monocline. But yeah, that's a monocline. Just imagine half a syncline, half an anticline. Just one limb formed by a fault underlying some perfectly ordinary strata just minding their own business and uh, gets pushed upwards. They gotta bend with it and you get that nice change in dip. That's all I really wanted to talk about for today. I replaced my old dime marker. But, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully it was informative, otherwise, good review, and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao.